conversation I've been telling you about is ahead of this important and rather relevant conversation because it's, it's timely. Let me tell you why it's timely. We are having food inflation on the ascendancy. I mean, sometimes it comes down and we give indications that we may have improvements at that level. But the bigger questions are not answered. How come a country like Ghana is importing tomatoes from a country like Burkina Faso? When it comes to access to water and irrigation, we appear to be doing better than them. And yet, that country is what's telling us when it comes to tomatoes and other, sometimes other vegetables too, what we should do there. Joining us for this important conversation is Professor Irene Susanna Eju. She's an agric economist, I mean, a professor in agric economics, and she's not an armchair professor. She's also a farmer. So she understands what happens in that particular sector. Prof, you're welcome to the Super Money Show. Thank you. I hope you are doing well. Very well. Good morning to your listeners. Good morning to you at the studio. Mm, it may sound like cliche, but how can a country like Ghana, that previously did uh, very great programs like FASDEP 1 and 2, we also moved on with a financing plan like Metasip in times past. Then we've gone through a whole list of massive programs aimed at improving and making a great ticket wonderful place as a mainstay of our economy. How come this same country is importing some like tomatoes from Burkina Faso? <laughs> okay, so if you look at the economy... Agriculture, manufacturing, services. And therefore, when you specify your intention, it is not action. The action, as you said, comes with an investment plan. Now, that investment plan, government has a rule, private sector has a rule, development partners have rules. So, if government says, I will give agriculture one billion, to do ABC. It is planned also. It is the releases are determined when they are released and whether all of that is released becomes the next issue. What I have lived through this one generation, 30 years of engaging in the agricultural sector is that government owned budget has never been adequate. Mm. And sometimes those of us who are part of the MNE system have realized that some of the releases do not get down to what it ought to do at the time that we planned it for. That is one. Two, the next group of people after government is the development partners. They help us with pilot projects. So a number of the things that you hear us talking about, we will take one district do something there. We'll take a few farmers, do something with them. We'll target women, do something with them. We'll target youth, do some capacity building with them. So you hear that projects are going on. But a lot of it is just, for me, touch and go. The third group of people are the farmers themselves. We are private sector. We have the corporates. And then a number of us, maybe 80 to 90% of us, are the ones that are not registered, we are not formalizing, we are not learning well. Some people are confusing us because sometimes we say we are peasants, so we won't do that. Sometimes we say, oh, this seed is not good, we won't use it. This um, organ, organ, organism is not good, we won't use it. This fertilizer is not good, we won't use it. So we don't have any structure. That is what I would say. Although the state has created departments of agriculture at the local level. There's some messages going. But our agriculture, if you look at the program, is supposed to be modernizing. It means using improved technology, guided, people learning, investing. Our private sector is also doing the big private sector. I'm not talking about the households. The households are private. But the big private sector is also not putting enough in the irrigation, in the improved seed, in the improved fertilizers, in the improved things. You know, we are in the fifth, fourth industrial revolution now. 
some have shifted their agriculture to smartness because of climate change. What mm. do you see? Not 11% of our farmers are using the irrigation because they cannot invest. And private sector is not invested. A few people are trying something like the new age, like the go for me. A few people are organizing the farmers. Even the farmers, the loyalty is not there because of the informalization. That is what I have learned. I am a mango farmer. I trade in rice. I work with rice farms because I want to trade in that rice. I invest a little in rice. It is not enough. But what I see is that the informalization, farmers, when you even group them, you teach them, you give them money. Tomorrow go, they are not no longer learning. They are no longer paying back. They are no longer together. Really? We cannot go forward like that. I have stated this 30 years. I teach cooperatives. I teach agricultural marketing. I teach what do I have I not been teaching? Not only to university students, but also even training because I have had support from GIZ, from USAID, from World Bank. What has the development partners not helped us to do? I, I know it is pilot. But what I have realized is that until our farmers are too many, we have a lot of farmers, like you are saying. We have too many. We are 30 million. If we say we have even 1 million farmers, it's a lot. Mm. But we are in the informal sector. Since last year, they say farmers should register to do what? To be hooked to aggregators. The aggregators themselves, they are not formalized. They themselves are not firm. So the farmers can't trust those, I mean, linkages that they are doing. I've started studying that. The farmers are laughing. That who? The people they have registered as aggregated, are they compliant? How will those contracts that they want to set even be effectively implemented and sustained? In fact, we may get a one-year or short-term response, but sustainability, will it go on? That is what I have realized. So, if tomatoes is coming from Burkina, it doesn't mean tomatoes don't go to Burkina. Don't get it wrong. Cross-border trading has always been with us. I have followed tomatoes from Akuma than to Togo. So these things that people say, tomatoes should come from Burkina. They are in the sub-region. We've always been echoed. We encourage inter-regional trade. Now it is after. Tomato should come. It, ours will go. Our oranges will go. Our papayas are going. Our, and, and, and a lot of pear, avocado pear. Go to, today is Tuesday, tomorrow, go to Techima. You will see maize going. You will see yams going. Then at another time, something else is coming in. If somebody has organized tomato production well in, in Burkina, and we can do it, we will also be sending it to Cote d'Ivoire. But if nobody is putting money there, don't let us say that farmers have not produced. We can produce. Variety, what is it? It's in the shops. Water quality, we can improve. There's a lot of things that we can do. But if people are not investing, and then the people who use the, I mean, we will work with are not formalizing, learning, serious, that is what I see some of the farmers I work with. Today we come together, we say we will do this. The money is here, the money is gone. There is no cooperation. So I think that somebody should do something about our farmers and their togetherness. You hear a lot. I am a board member of the Peasant Farmers Association. Mm -hmm. But when I go to the field, I don't see society level prison farmers association really yes but i've told my board already that i have not seen a society i study now i'm in kumasi i'm going to the field i will do it that is what i do every month i'm out there i cannot find this two months i've been studying cooperatives in vegetables we have not had any group say prison farmers association so they sit at the top Sometimes you hear them. They have representation. 
you hear Ghana, um, what do you call it? We have another one which is Farmers and Fishermen Association. Yes. When you go down, you don't hear you have funk. When you go down, you hear you don't hear them. We have the communicals something. I have studied all of them. So when I come down, then when I ask, oh, they have different names. I mean, that's right. I said, if they are peasant farmers, they should tell me that, oh, we are peasant farmers, but this is the name we have taken. I don't see them. And even if they are there, how are they organized? The advocacy is always about, oh, don't grow GMO. Oh, don't use that. Oh, do this. Don't do that. You, you, you get me? No, I, I, I that get you. That should not be it. We should organize our few families. When you go elsewhere, it's about few people doing things well. It's not about many families. You're doing things well. That is what we have here. You'll be in hearing. Ghana. You'll be few farmers doing things well. Organize my one acre okay. is next to my neighbor, mm. and we are all thinking alike. When the diseases come, we are all managing it. When we want to plow, we all plow. We all study our calendars well. If climate change is our issue, we all understand our concern and we take corporate decisions. I'm telling you, that is where a lot of the farms I have visited in developed and emerging countries are doing. No country I have visited and has good agriculture is doing it the way we are doing it. Even and that is what probably Burkina is doing. Well, okay. corporate farming, thinking, improving the mindset. If we don't do that in Ghana, we will keep importing mangoes. That was another one. I am a mango farmer. We said, let us manage our pests and diseases area-wide. My neighbor said, no, I won't do it. And nobody is forcing him. Wow. It is now, Prof, in the last nine minutes, we've been listening to Professor Irene Susanna Eju, and you should know, she's a distinguished agric economist. She's been teaching and also farming herself for a very long time. We are seeking to put into perspective the Ghanaian problem with agriculture, with the hope that we can get a solution to bringing down the food inflation we have in this republic. And she's been outlining a lot for us. Prof, I know your time is limited on this conversation, and certainly we will come back to it. My question is, what did we do right under Colonel Bernasco during the Operation Feed Yourself system that we are not doing right today that is making us feel that whatever massive production we appear or we are not doing out there on the farms is not reflecting on the table when it comes to pricing? when it comes to the cost of the food, and also when it comes to the nutrients we are even providing to ourselves. No, wait. When, when under Benasco, you are talking about 70s. Yes. Is that, is that it? Yes. You are talking about 70s. Urbanization, where was it? So when they said operation feed yourself, already the rural had land. We didn't have land issue. Mm. So the government provided a few irrigation facilities, and that is what government did. One region, one irrigation, and that is what is there, not maintained. Okay. Do you get me? I get you. I have stated that from 2014 to 2017, under the Ministry of Finance, where I was doing my sabbatical leave, that's what we did. We looked at the irrigation facilities. They were done then. We are not even improving those large facilities. So if in the 70s we had these irrigation facilities for rice and for vegetables, and we are not maintaining them because some private sector or government itself, the government cannot do it because government's budget has become limited. We have moved from 7 million at a time or 12 million at a time to, to now 30 or 35 million. And we will not change our minds on how we waste resources. That is another thing. How we waste resources. Some people call it corruption. Some people call it misapplication of funds. Some people call it whatever they want to call it. If you don't, I call it waste. You are wasting some of the funds that should go into purchasing facilities or motivating people to learn, to apply knowledge and skill and have right attitude so that we will do the right things all the time. We cannot get the 1970s results. Even at the time, 
Mm. We keep saying it, but when I studied it, it was half of that. Oh, really? The NASCO, yes. It was not well organized. Otherwise, why was it not sustainable? I'm questioning it. Why was it not sustainable? I was seeing it at the time. I mean, it's an interesting perspective. School. It's it an interesting that, perspective. Immediately, 79 came. JJ was not happy. You, you, you get me? I guess And you. then, all the coups started. And then, we had some comfort. But then we realized that military coup did not even help us, as it helped Korea. So it means we have a problem with leadership as well. Military coups have not helped us because the things they have put together were not sustained. But the same, we have come to democracy. Mm -hmm. Democracy is it helping us the same leadership, local government, the middle, and then the national. If we don't check these things and change our minds as a people, and then so that the citizens are complying, I'm telling you, we're going nowhere. And that is with my farmers. I have said it now and again. Farmers, if you don't change your mind, and you will just be called poor farmers, we are poor, so we can't adopt this. We are poor, so we can't do this. We are poor, so we can't do that. We will remain in the next 30 years. I'm sad that I've been in this agriculture for 30 years, teaching, doing research, practicing myself, consulting, being part of all the roundtables with the first steps and the meta steps, leading M&E, reviewing. What have we not done? Now, it's important I ask you this question because there is new leadership. There is a new program, Planting for Food and Jobs 2.0. Now, the minister has indicated that he can boldly say and boast that after this program is implemented in the next five years, Ghana will be food secured and resilient. Is it an now ambitious the question? Will, will jump in, please. It is not true. Will he be the minister in the, in the next five years, even if his government is on? No, he's that talking is about, another thing. He's talking about things you put in place. We don't think nation. We think party. We don't think nation. If we think nation, look, this thing was pronounced some months ago. Where is it today? The rains are finished in the south. It is going to the north. And you are still talking about it will work. Oh, they said no, they started with some 10,000 uh, area that has been cultivated, produced, and service plots that are going to be given to farmers to start their cultivation. They are moving away from the system where they just gave implements to uh, peasant farmers and other farmers in small bits. They are now looking at big-time farming put together like you appear to have recommended no long ago. Where? They are pronounced. They start. Go and see. Where is the infrastructure? Where are the people? Where is the accommodation for my young students that are coming out? The national service people that are going out now, my students, you can see fear in them because they don't have hope. They have mm. done the agriculture. They are ready. Come and see them last week. I celebrated with them national service week. These are intelligent people. They have done posters speaking the English. They are ready to put their hands to the soil. But where? Where? Go and take go and cut last again. They won't. So they have fear in their eyes. The banks will not take them. The government says, I'm not recruiting. Even my, 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 I am a dean of a school. The government is not giving me more teachers. So me, I'm retiring, but I have to go and teach and do research and do everything that I was doing 30 years ago again. You don't appear to say there's hope for the future. I have hope. That is what has brought me here. In okay. Ghana, you have to live with hope. I'm telling you. So that's why we pray. You think people pray for which reason? We oh. pray because we have hope. We have hope in a supreme being who will turn our things around for us. And that is what we have lived on. It has helped us. Otherwise, we will be dying. Now, our, I learned that our life expectancy has moved from 48 to 67. Mm -hmm. Some of it is not always medical science or good, um, good uh, medical nutrition. A lot of it is because we have hope. Mm. I'm telling you. Oh. I'm a church leader, so I know that is the hope we hold on to. So I have hope. I won't give it up. Prof, I am very grateful to you for your time today. Very thought-provoking and uh, insightful words from you this morning. We sure should be transitioning to the Labadi Beach Hotel where 
we are enhancing our great sufficiency to tackle food inflation. And I'll be having this conversation with Professor Irene Susanna Ejiu. She's an agri economist and she's a distinguished farmer herself. 